In the previous lesson, we learned about WordPress themes and we actually got to install our WordPress theme onto our test website. So let's take a look at what we have right now. As you can see, it's very simple. There's not any content to it except the hello world post. So just a quick overview of what we're going to be learning in this lesson is the first thing we're going to just go over a tour of what a post versus a page is and we're actually going to create one. Then we're going to look at what's the difference between a category versus a tag. We're also going to be looking at some of the more useful features of a post or a page that some of us may forget. Um, and the final thing is we're going to be actually editing a post in a page. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually giving a tour of a post versus a page and then we're going to create one. And it may seem somewhat arbitrary as to, well, posts and pages, they can all do the same things, right? You can have comments on a post or page, you can have sidebars. So what's really the difference? Uh, so the thing for this is really just to be consistent, where a post is things like blog entries, something that is time sensitive, versus a page is something that's static. So something that probably doesn't change very much, like a contact page, an about page, or a home page. But the real important part is this. A post appears in your RSS feed. So your RSS feed is something that people can subscribe to. And we'll show you actually how to create that RSS feed in the future. Uh, but it will give updates to all your readers if they want to subscribe to your blog. So our website looks something like this. And it's at wpforalltv.com. And it's very simple. It's very bare right now. And all we see is just the hello world post. But now we want to add additional posts. We want to add more content to it. So how exactly do we go about doing that? So we're going to go into our back end of WordPress and it should look something like this. Uh, and since we're adding a post, we're adding a new blog entry, we're just going to go into posts. And as you can see, this kind of displays all the posts that are already created, right? And we have currently all we have is the hello world post. So if you want to add a new post, we just go into add new. So on this next page, this is where you're actually going to enter in all your content. And yours should be blank initially, but I actually went ahead and just copied and pasted some things right there. Um, so the first thing up here is 10 tips for scoring a great deal on cruises. That's where you would have entered in your title. So I wanted my title to be that because we're making a travel blog. And down here is where you actually enter in all your content. All this stuff right here is the content to your website. And I just copied some arbitrary text here, but you would make it to specific to whatever your blog post was about. So what we're going to do now is simply just publish it, right? I'm going to publish it just to show you because all we have right here is our basic information. We have our title and we have our content. We don't really need anything else. The extra stuff is additional, but I'll go ahead and show you that right after this. I just want to show you what it'll look like. So we're just going to click publish. So we publish that right there and now it's going to be live. It's going to actually be live on our website. So when we go over to our website. What we're going to do is simply click refresh. And when we click refresh, we're going to see our blog post here. And this is actually our blog page. So underneath this, we'll also see our Hello World post. So we'll actually show all of our different posts. So if we click on it, we can see that now we'll actually see our blog post by itself, right? Underneath will be nothing except leaving a reply. And if we wanted to add any additional things here in the future, we could add those here. But this is the individual blog post for 10 tips for scoring a great deal on cruises. So now that we've created our post and we know how to actually create the content to it, what does all this other stuff mean? Um, so I'm just going to go down the line kind of explaining what each of these are. And the first being right here is that, well, you notice that before it said publish, now it says update. And the reason for that is our, even though we have published our post, we can still make changes to it. So for example, say we wanted to put the word test there, uh, we, we could click update and it would actually update our post and we would see test in it. And let's go ahead and check that. And when we click refresh, we see that test is actually right here. So we see that the update does work and we kind of can tell how that would work. The next being categories and tags. And this is something that I want to explain. So what's the difference between a category and a tag? And although it may seem somewhat arbitrary, kind of like a post versus a page, it's good to be consistent from the beginning. And put very simply, categories are very broad groupings versus tags are more detailed specific to that blog post. So a category uh, would be something like, that you would put in a menu item like themes or reviews or videos, very broad groupings of things versus tags more specific to the individual blog post. So for example, if you're writing a blog post about a certain theme, right? You can say theme review or theme forest or April 2013 theme, something that's more specific to that individual blog post. So now that we have a kind of basic understanding of what the difference between a category and a tag is, let's see what we would put here. So the first thing we want to do is uncheck uncategories because the main thing is we just don't want uncategories. We want to actually categorize it in something, anything really that's relevant. So for us, since it's our first one, we're going to put something like cruise deals. 
and we're just going to click add new category and the one thing that you can see is that you can have parent categories and you can have subcategories so if you wanted a category under cruise deals it could go there as well and for tags you can put something like carnival or top 10 or even saving money on cruises right so something maybe more specific or more relevant to this individual blog post so the next thing that I want to talk about is the featured images, and that is this one right here. So if you want to actually add a picture, you're just going to click set featured image. And so you actually have two options of uploading a file or selecting from your media library. But since we don't have any pictures uploaded already, there's nothing going to be in our media library. So we're just going to click on upload files and you can either select files or just drag and drop. And I have this picture saved on my desktop of a bird looking out onto a cruise ship. I took this picture a while ago. So after your image has successfully uploaded, you're going to see a couple things on the right, which is your title, your caption, alt text, and description. And this is great for SEO or search engine optimization. And it's what allows Google to index your website better. And I'll actually describe what each of these four things are. I've actually entered them in already, but initially they'll be blank. So the first being your title. And the title is very really important because it describes the image as well as describing the blog post itself. And so it should be very relevant to what your blog post is. And so I put 10 tips for cruises. It's good to kind of pack in as many keywords that are relevant that you're kind of targeting. Caption is not so important for this because caption, really all it is is when you have an image, generally the caption shows up under the image. And we'll see what that looks like more. But for feature images, captions actually don't show up. So I'm going to leave this one blank. And the next one is alt text, and this one is extremely important. It's kind of like your meta keywords or your keywords that you're trying to target for your individual blog posts. And so these are very important because it's really what describes your image, but also what describes your blog post. So things like cruise deals or money saving tips for cruises, those are things that are very targeted, targeted keywords that a lot of people may search on Google. And so you want to definitely enter those in in your alt text and it'll increase the keyword density of your blog post of these keywords. The final one being your description, and this should be more in plain English. It's what actually describes what the image is, but it still should be relevant to the, to the blog post itself and learn how to save money and time on your next cruise. And that's very short and simple, but it's something that you know a human would read. And as you can tell, most of my title, my alt text, and my description are more for SEO benefit. And the reason for that for me is because my intended audience or my intended reader is somebody who's going to be finding cruise ship deals rather than somebody who's going to be looking for a bird looking at a cruise ship picture. Right. However, the inverse would be true if you're making a website that was more portfolio based or picture based where you were showcasing your pictures. You would want to definitely put descriptions that were relevant to that picture itself. However, in my case, I'm wanting to showcase the content. So that's why all these keywords, the alt text and the title are really linking all back to my content or my blog entry. So that's why you may see somewhat of that discrepancy. And so once you've actually filled all this out, you're going to click set featured image. And we're going to see that the picture uploaded nicely. And we're going to click update. And when we go back to our website and we refresh it, and as you can tell, the image didn't actually show up on the blog post itself. Because we mentioned before, featured images don't show up on the blog itself. They show up on the main page or on your blog page as a thumbnail. And in our case, our featured image isn't just a thumbnail. It's actually quite a large image, right? And that's just in your settings of your actual theme. And that's all we're going to learn for this lesson. But in the next lesson, we're going to actually learn how to add more media. And this is media within the post. We saw how to add featured images, but we'll also learn how to add videos and images from, say, a secondary website like Flickr. And I'll tell you why that's important to do on the next lesson.